Matthew 12, 33. Now, we've just been talking about the unpardonable sin, and the unpardonable sin is they said, or were saying, that Jesus was casting out devils through Beelzebub, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. So after he blasts them, he takes it one step further in 12.33 in Matthew. Either make the tree good and his fruit good. Or else make the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt. And he's always, the Bible's always liking men to trees. For the tree is known by his fruit. Now notice you can't have a good and corrupt tree. You cannot have a corrupt and good tree. And yet the Bible says that there are some that are lukewarm and it makes God sick. What's the contradiction? There is none. Because a lukewarm Christian doesn't produce any fruit. He goes to church, plays nice, looks nice, acts nice. And then away from church, he's a heathen. I mean, you can take a tree in the woods and cut it down and put it in your house and decorate it with, with all kinds of pretty lights and bulbs. And it's not a Christmas tree. It's a dead tree you cooked that you you cut down. It was never a Christmas tree. Doesn't it seem odd. You can go out, cut down the tree, bring it in your house, put stuff on it, decorate it, plug it in and everything. Doesn't that just seem odd to you? I mean, either gonna have, we went out a couple weeks ago, we got live plants. We didn't go cut them down and stick them in a pot. Some people go cut down trees, they take the wood, they bring it in the house, they got a fireplace. That's where your Christmas tree ends up anyway. Your money goes up the chimney or... or to a compost pile, but that didn't cost you nothing. So, still talking to the Pharisees, teaching, discipling, admonishing the people, you're gonna make you're either gonna make them good or you're gonna make them corrupt. Old generation of vipers. Oh Jesus, how 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 dare you talk to them like that? You offended. And there's one point, one, one of the gospels, the disciples, no, the lawyers came up to Jesus. You offend them. Jesus like, and he blasts the lawyers. Listen, Jesus and the disciples are not your modern church. There's no fruity tooty, cocky booty, let's have good games and fun and candy bars. They nailed it down what it was and they painted it as it was and they told you what it was. This is a birdhouse. This is a fir tree. It ain't no Christmas tree. He blasts the religious people who are turning the people away from God. And we were in a Southern Baptist church. Every time you pass by a church, make sure you pray for it. That's not Jesus. Listen, as a family... We would dare, and may the Lord help me to get better and do better, but we would dare to stand on the sidewalks of a Catholic church and preach and teach and try to get gospel tracts out. And we did that in our hometown in Connecticut one year. We did it for two years. The third year, I got smart. I called the church and said, hey, when are you going to have the Passion Walk? Well, situation's out of control. We decided not to have it this year. I'm like, wow, did we do that? <laughs> And when we dealt with a Catholic church here in Daytona Beach, that guy, I told, I said, you're the devil. How dare you say that? Hey, anybody who's taking the bread, taking the life, taking the salvation, and throw it in the garbage can, you're the devil. And the guy looked at me, yeah, I know. You ain't going to get no fruity tootie candy cotton candy from me. 
my wife, when I'm preaching, she said, you know, you don't give people a chance to talk. I'm, I'm not going to give you a chance to sound stupid in front of everybody. As soon as I know what your mouth is going to say, I know the Bible says wrong, but when you're dealing with people in the public and you get the public watching, you cannot allow their foolishness, you cannot allow their lies coming out of Satan's mouth. you got to stop it. you got to nip it in the book. That's what God's given me to do. We're to reboot, re, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, in season, out of season. Old generation, but you snakes. That goes back to the serpent, Genesis 3, the serpent, which is the devil, which is the dragon, which is Satan, Revelation 12. He'll even go so far to say in John chapter 8, verse 41, you are your father's the devil. That don't sound like Jesus driving by in his camel. <laughs> Father bless them. How can ye be evil? Uh oh, okay, that's what they are. Speak good things. All right, so you got a good tree, it's got good fruit. You got a corrupt tree, you got corrupt fruit. You are evil. Look and sound that. You are evil. And you speak good things. That Catholic priest is evil. And he tries to sound good and flowery. That's Southern Baptist. He's evil. He tries to talk flowery and all that. That Baptist preacher. That Baptist Sunday school teacher. They're evil. But they try to sound good. You look at the Hebrew I know. Look at the Greek I know. Look at the big words I know. Okay. Does Jesus know you? Are there fruits in heaven of gold, silver, and precious stone? Because if there isn't, and we got to wait till we get to heaven, if there isn't gold, silver, and precious stones, you've got evil fruit of wood, hay, and stubble, you're evil. How's that? And God ain't going to reward you a ribbon of purple, red, white, and blue, and, and rainbow just because you participated in the game. He don't do that. <clears throat> There's no bench-warming Christian. I don't care if you're in a nursing home and you're confined to the bed for the rest of your life. There's one thing you can do is you can pray. That's a weapon. That's one of the armor. Now, you may not be able to get down your knees. God will understand. I bet you throughout the years, and probably the apostles, I bet you there was probably some lowly Christian who couldn't do much, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do nothing. I'm trying to think what Paul called them, the, the least esteem, I think it is. And I guarantee that would be the one that, that that's the prayers of God here. For out of the abundance of the heart, not the mind, why'd you say that? Why does that why does that language come out of their mouth? Out of the heart. Jeremiah said, the heart is wicked above all things, deceitful. I just let my heart follow me. Congregation, let your heart flow. <laughs> Jesus will say later on, out of the heart comes adultery, fornication, Hollywood. You, you're listening to that wolf in the sheep's clothing. What's in your heart is what you will speak. Now, yeah, we're all we're going to say something eventually. James will say, "Listen, we can't bridle this tongue." <clears throat> if you're a preacher, if you're a teacher, you're in the street preacher. You're well witness. Somewhere along the line, you're going to say something. You're going to mess up. I remember my wife one time. We listened to preachers. Now he said that wrong. He did that. Wrong. Listen, you ain't going to bat one hundred percent. I guarantee I mess things up. You go back and take these videos and you listen to them. You'll find I'll say something that's completely, absolutely stupid. I didn't mean to say that. 
That's how it came out. Satan entered. But a religion. Well, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the religion. If you're not giving them the truth, and you're trying to fluffy nutter sandwich them, you're evil. If you don't tell them they are sinners and Jesus is the way and the truth. Now, I just told you that the, that the Catholic Church, if unpardonable sin, is something I commit. If you're going to deal with me on the street as a Catholic, and you're going to tell me the Mass, you're going to tell me the Virgin Mary, you're going to tell me the Pope, you're going to tell me the Mother Church and all that, I'm going to tell you by the blood of Jesus Christ that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If the fact is I'm dealing with a Jehovah Witness, it's going to be... Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And well, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. But what about the scripture? Thomas said, my Lord, my God. But Jesus, not Thomas said, my Lord, my God. I'm committing the unpardonable sin by the Catholic Church because I am not going to fold. I am not going to give in. You're going to walk off my driveway. To the Catholic Church. I committed the abominable sin a couple of years, Christmas Eve, because uh, I haven't been well to do. When they started throwing the gospel tracks in the garbage can, we were there. They respected us to go in the car, get home, go home, and, and not come back. You know, I went to the car, popped over the door, sat, open, sat in the car, got my amplifier, and started preaching to them. That's the unpardonable sin. But God's up in heaven. I like that. That's exactly what they needed. That's unloving. That's unkind. Well, that's... I'm sorry. So I was walking up to a guy who, who, who's a, a religionist, a head of a, of a religion. You viper. That don't sound kind of friendly, loving, goody. See, people don't even realize who Jesus is. He got in your face and told you the truth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So, the, the reason why, the reason why it came, the reason why it came out of their mouth or your mouth, because it's in there or your heart. You got to be careful what you put in your heart. And it will come out. Especially if you got a mouth that runs. You got less chances of blowing it if you're able to keep your mouth shut. But how many times have you opened up that big fat mouth about somebody or something and not even realized that somebody or something could have been just around the corner the entire time? Oh, yeah, a dedicated employee. Uh huh, you talk like that. Oh, you go to church, you're a Christian like that. And, oh, you. you, you, you. What was that came out of your mouth? I had one time I was, when I was working for the newspaper. And we, we just had one of those bad nights. Everybody. I'm in the truck and the papers are coming. It's hot. I think it was even rain, but I was just getting mad. I was getting frustrated. And I forgot even what I, what I said. I don't know if I said hell or damn, something like that. I just yell, whatever. I don't even remember what it was now. And I, it stopped the whole. I mean, it was it was an innocent word. It stopped the whole loading dock. And heads poked in my veins. And you said that? What? Oh, I said sucked. I said this sucks. <laughs> Styling. <laughs> what? You said something bad. <laughs> well, you guys say much worse. Is that what you think of me? <laughs> Suck is a bad word. <laughs> See, in my heart, that was a bad word, they thought. A good man out of good treasure of the heart bringing good things. How hard can you get with that? I can't understand the Bible. Well, I understood that. Good brings forth good. 
So when people walked up to me when I preached on the street, well, I'm good, and you're rejecting your mouth and off about God and, and God's preaching that's in the pages of the Bible, and you proclaim to be a Christian, and you're telling me what I'm doing turns people away, and it's not blessing? No, you're not good. I let my light shine. How many people got saved through that? Do they even know you go to church? Or do you go to church? And an evil man out of the evil out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things. Now see, this is the thing you gotta look at the Christian on Sunday morning who goes to church. What are they on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I mean, if you can take a tree and dress it up for one month out of twelve and call it a Christmas tree, and it's not. You can get somebody to go to church every Sunday and act and do and great and all that. And outside the church, there's a wicked devil. And remember who Jesus is talking to. He's talking to the religious hypocrites, the leaders. And the people think, oh, they're just so great. They talk so wonderfully. We got the greatest Pharisee. And Jesus blows them out of the water. And what we're talking about tonight can go for the Jew, it can go for the Christian, or it can go for the Gentile. This is something everybody. Because Paul will speak about your mouth. James will speak about your mouth. Peter will speak. You'll find most places in the Bible there's something about the mouth. Eve, got, Eve sinned what was not. The first sin was not eating the fruit. She opened up her mouth and started talking to the serpent, started correcting the word of God. That was her problem. Go back and check it. She corrected, added, subtracted, edited what God said before she ate. Her big mouth. So years and years, 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 years later, Paul writes... Let the women keep silence because you can't rely on them. I'm sorry, but that's what the Bible said. Oh, we got to get a new updated verse. That's what Eve did. That's why you don't like the King James Bible. The King James Bible takes you, bends you over, gets a nice big fat boot, and kicks your rear end across the room. Then it comes walking over you as it leaves the door. Why else would a book offend people? It's a book. You know, Tom Sawyer, you know, that offends me. He talks about a, a Negro slave. Yeah? You know how often that, I read that book, I don't know how many times. You know how often, I don't even know what the kid's name is, I forget. You know how often that child's mentioned? Not many times. He's bringing in tomatoes. He, he mentioned, he, he's seen at the fence when, when he's painting the fence, Tom, Tom's painting the fence, uh, and a couple other places. That's it. You don't get offended that here's a boy getting in all kinds of trouble. That don't offend you. Oh, he's just a cute, you know, cute little actors of a brat little boy. Eh, no, 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 no. They probably get offended now. He he gives he gives the cat painkiller. Some of you probably don't even know. You never read the book. You got to read that book fourteen times over. That's one of the good books. Oh, the Bible's a good book. No, the Bible's the Holy Bible. That's what the Bible is. The Bible ain't a good book. It's a good book because it's 66 books in one book. But I say unto you, this is Jesus. And this can be to Jews, Gentiles, or the Christian. This can be anybody. Now watch the word. Every Idle word, not plural. Go ahead, say that one cuss word. Drop the F bomb. That's one word. 
Call them the, 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 the butthole. That's one word. I said two, but the, the word you're thinking about is the, call her a female, you know what? That's a word. Because that's important. Because what we're going to finish the next two verses is not words. What word did you say? And there's a word that man has trouble saying, especially to a loved one, to a spouse. I know I've been married twice. That one word, sorry. That one word, love. How about saying a one word yes and it should be no? Or saying no, it should be a yes. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about every idle word. Have you said something of no benefit to God, His Son Jesus, or anybody else? You just said something to say something. Every idle word. You did not need to say that. And come on, Christian, there's plenty of times, if you are in the will of God, there's plenty of times that the Holy Spirit says, put the brakes on. And you put that gas pedal to the, to the floor and you nail, you go right into speaking. Every idle word, you know, you get that cop that comes up to, you, to your window and only reason why he pulled over could tell you that your blinker light is broken, or you didn't use it. And he comes up to it, and you start firing. Oh, the police! Oh, the police has it in for me. No, you were a jerk and opened up your mouth. Is there something you said? A joke? A comment? It sucks. That's the key. Every idle word. Let's not get to, all right, I'm going to sit down and open the Bible with you, and I'm going to show you something of your life from the Bible. We're not talking about all these Bible lessons and you can't say this word right. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that one word. Because there have been men in the ministry that couldn't talk at all, had physical uh, 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 infirmities and, not, and God still used it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you and me as Christians. And we said something to say something that ought not to have been said. Just so we can say something. You go to church. How about that ball team? That didn't need to be said. Let's say what Paul said. Paul said, the only thing I want to know is about Jesus. I don't care about the ball team. You know, this family over there, they're having troubles. You don't need to hear that. You don't need to say that. I had a guy one time I was working with, he doesn't say, and he's just filthy mouth, Catholic. And he comes to me, he's not, I got this bad joke I want to tell you. It's just, I don't want to hear it. Come on, I got to tell you, I don't want to hear it. I left the room, the guy followed me. Come on, I got to tell you. I said, no, I left another room. And he followed, and I was like, no, shut up. But have you been that way with God and other people? In all actuality, you should just shut up. That's a bad word to some people. There's times that you need to shut up. But you go, open up the flap, and God writes that down. And you know what the problem with this every idle word? All right. 
you can confess. All right, you you cussed. You confess you saw something you shouldn't see. You can confess, you know, you stole a pencil that you didn't, that wasn't yours. You can confess you didn't do a hard day's work. You can confess late. You can confess gluttony. You can, up to this message that you're listening to tonight, or when you're listening to this message, when was the last time you have ever gone to God? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When was the last time you went up to God and said, those words I need not to say? I shouldn't have said that. And there'll be times, you know, we'll say, you know, you, you said it and you think, I should have said that. Did you tell God? Did you tell the person? Problem is, a lot of words that you come out of your big fat mouth can't come back. And what Jesus is saying, every idle word, never mind what you're teaching these people in heresies, evil, Corrupt are the words he uses. How about the idle word? What is the idle word that they said? Oh, he does it with my Beelzebub. And that idle word, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, in their day and time of the time of Jesus, not today, they are condemned for life in hell. And when they are condemned to, to hell, and they're at the great white throne judgment, and they're going to be about to be cast in the lake of fire, why? He does it by Beelzebub. That's one word. All God's got to say is, Beel all God's got to play back in recorder of your like Beelzebub. That's it. That's all you need to play. How about you? And we got to realize two things that I try to point out in my ministry when I can. You have got to be aware, Christians, never mind the lost people, but Christians, you got to be realized in your life, every thought God is judging. You don't have to sleep with a woman. Whosoever looketh upon a woman, the, the lust after her in her in his heart. We're all. We're talking about tonight. Talk about out of the abundance of your house you, you speak. Uh, out of the heart you speak. Talk about that sin. But in Matthew five, if you think in your heart something, you're guilty. God wrote it down. Now, twelve subtract five. I can't do it in my head. Out of the heart, the mouth of speaking, God is going to judge you. How about something you wanted to say, but you didn't say it? Boy, you got to. And I didn't do it. I wanted to do it. I'm sorry I didn't do it. Revelation 19. Uh, let's see if I can find this. I wanted to do it and I got sidetracked. And I'm making excuses and it's wrong. Um, let's do this. Let me try this. Yeah, I don't have all the answers. Uh, I'm trying to find uh, it's Revelation ten. Revelation ten six. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are therein, and earth and the things that are therein, and the sea, and the things that are therein, that there should be time no more. There is coming a time, back to Matthew 12, that there will be no more time. 
And you better thank God for that. Because if you think the Walmart line is long, wait till you get to the line at the Great White Throne Judgment. Okay? Okay, well, now watch what Jesus said in 1236. Every idle word that men shall speak, men, Hebrew or Gentile or saved, But well, we're not going to talk about the saved because we're talking about the great white throne judgment. But for the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to leave that for a moment. Every idle word that men shall speak, let's say the Jews and the Gentiles, they shall give an account thereof in the day of ju judgment. Revelation 20 speaks about the great white throne judgment and the books were open. Before that happens, eternity begins. Time. You know, when we've been there for 10,000 years. No, we're not there for 10,000 years. We're not there for eons. We're not there for... Time stops. We're eternity. There is no time in eternity. There is no seconds. There's no minutes. There's no hours. There's no day. There's no week. There's no month. There's no year. There's no... I think you got my point. Aren't you glad that there's no time at the great white throne judgment when everybody's going to step up to the plate? Every idle word Jesus said they shall give an account. Whoa! I can think of some people. Wow. All right, let's take... Not only what you say, let's go to Matthew, not stay where we are, but Matthew 5, 28, who started looking upon a woman to lust after her in his heart. All right, let's take every thought. Every thought, everything you say of no importance of sin that did not honor God, his son, Jesus Christ, or somebody else. You said thank you when you should have said thank you. That's not what we're talking about. You always got to get the last word. Boing! <laughs> Jesus said, Every idle word that men shall speak, saved or lost, Now, for the Christian, it looks like it's all lumped. <laughs> Thank God. It's either wood, hay, or stubble, gold, silver, precious stone. Every idle word that is to no credit will be wood, hay, or stubble. Boom, that burns up. You don't get anything. Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment, the books are open. And if it's not under the blood of Jesus, which for a lost man, it's none of it's under the blood of Jesus. You're going to be standing at a long line to the great white throne judgment. Thank God we won't have wristwatches. That goes all the way back to Adam. Adam will be at the great white throne judgment and be judged right. And his name's in the book. He'll go into glory. There are saved people at the, judgment, at the great white throne judgment. I know some people don't believe in that, but that's tough cookie. For by thy words, what you said, not what they said, what you said. Well, he shouldn't have said that. That's their problem, not yours. He egged me on. He should just shut up, turned away, and left. I wish my boss had dropped dead. You're thinking. Loser, shut up! No. Yes. No, I'm not going to shut up. We all know somebody. And I hope it's not us. And as a Christian, think about something and just ignorantly, and you just said something, and it's 
no purpose. It did not glorify God or Jesus or another wood, hay, or stubble. I'll give you. I'll give you a great thing. You're sitting in church. Oh, it's cold in here. Now, did that really need to be said? You could let the person in charge of the, the climate. But sir, it's really cold in here. Or, it's so hot and here's Satan's over there paying. But you don't need to say it like that. In the grounds of sarcasm is where we could be here. And sarcasm could be used good. You'll find sarcasm in the Bible. God uses it. But you can use it for wrong. Understand and know. Everything that you think. And everything you say. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. That's a cross-reference to Matthew 12, but it's not. there isn't. You've got to have the mind of Christ and you've got to have the heart of Christ to not think about those things. And I'm guilty. And you've got to have the, 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 the mouth of Christ, the heart of Christ to I don't need to say that. But you can't go and make up your own rules because look what he said. Jesus, old generation of vipers. Now, some people would say, well, that's idle. That's uncalled for. Well, evidently, it's not. How you like that? How about somebody comes up to a Christian and says, Judge not least you be judged, and they don't correct the rest of the verse. You know what they're going to be judged by? They're going to be judged by what the Bible says that they said it didn't say, or harshly said. That's a serious thing to be given account. For the Christian account would be wood, hay, or stubble. You don't get nothing for it. It's a loss. You can boo-hoo all you want. For by thy words, plural, now plural, all the words lumped together at judgment. The word, every idle word, what you say now, Thy words at judgment, all of it lumped together, written down, recorded, whatever it is for the Christian. Thou shalt be justified. What you say that benefits God, his son, Jesus, and others. And that includes sarcastic remarks if you're out witnessing and you get a hard time. And that is just as words would be justified as you're in an elevator in a hospital and a priest comes walking in and everybody says, Father, Father, Sir, you should not call him Sir. You ought to call him Father. Uh, the guy don't even know how to put his shirt on. He's got the tag on the front. <gasps> Sacrilege. No. Justification. I'm telling you what that guy, what that is in sarcastic mode. All right, uh, how's that? Well, I should have said the Bible says, "Call no man your father." Oh, how's that? How about saying something to somebody and you should really have been speaking Bible to them? How about saying a whole bunch of worldly junk to, to somebody and you should have really been telling them about Jesus? 
in your entire life, you let you let your light shine, but you've never said anything about Jesus. And by thy words, plural, all of it together, thou shalt be condemned. Again, there's no middle ground. It's either good or it's corrupt. It's either good or it's evil. Every idle word that men, Hebrews, Gentiles, Christians, it's either going to be justified or it's going to be condemned. That's it. And that goes for your thoughts. That's why people don't like the Bible. They want the sins that affect other people. I never killed anybody. But what has your mouth said? When I used to preach in the streets and all that, I get back to it so much. I used to point out three sins. There, there, there are Christians out there, you know, they've got abortion and sodomy. And, no, 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 no. There's three sins. Have you ever taken anything that's not yours, thou shalt not steal? Have you ever said, have you ever told one lie? I mean, have you ever called out you weren't sick and you weren't sick? All right, thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you ever, ever given your parents a hard time, bad mouth? Well, honor thy mother and father. We're all sinners. But I didn't kill anybody. That's one of the ten. How are you doing the three of the ten? I mean, we can go to God first all the time, commandment number one. I mean, we all blow that one. I mean, it's three o'clock in the morning. My bladder wakes me up. This morning, I don't think my. I don't want to get out of bed. It's, it's cold out there. I want to stay wrapped up. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can wait the three or four hours. <laughs> I'm guilty there. But what, what about the more serious, what about the more account that we're going to have to give, rather than killing people, what about what we thought, and then tonight, what we said? And when you run to James, I forget which chapter it is, it's an interesting thing about the tongue, because it says the tongue is on the fire of hell. And he goes and says, no one can, no one can, uh, Tame the tongue. You know, you can go to a circus and the lions are tame, the elephants are tame, the horses are tame. And that one time you open up the mouth and you just made an argument for life in your marriage. You just made things hostile between you and your, your boss. Your co-worker, your friend ain't talking to you no more. And I don't know how it's done, but an angel in heaven, I don't, I don't know, all right, November 21st, 2022, Thursday. And God and Jesus over there, uh, respectfully, twirling the thumbs, devil comes up, you, you hear that? Did you hear that? Father looks to the son. Because you're not going to think about repenting of that sin. I'll tell you why. Your great pastor doesn't tell you. Your Sunday school teacher didn't tell you what I just told you tonight. You are in danger of your thoughts. And you are in danger of judgment of what you say. And sometimes it comes out. Sometimes those dreams... I don't know if it's going to be a dream like that. Still, it's a sin. Nowhere in the Bible to say, okay, loophole number 47, You, if you dreamed it, it's okay. No, no, no. I don't say that. There's no loopholes for sin. 